Welcome. SAP GTS, Identity-Based Preference Processing, maximizes the potential of preferential origin by determining the origin one level below the product. With a batch or any other identifier, the worst-case principle on the product level no longer applies. The actual preference status of the product can be influenced by exchanging component batches. The views, information or opinions expressed are solely those of the individuals involved and not those of the individual's employer or any other group or individual. Let us look at some of the benefits provided by identity-based preference processing. Since you know the preference status per batch, you can deliver exactly the batches to your customers that they demand. In intercompany sales, this leads to reduced import duties to be paid by the company. In external sales, this leads to higher margins respectively lower prices for the end customer. Let us clarify some terminology. Preferential origin is applied to goods from particular countries, which fulfill certain criteria. The goods must meet conditions laid down in the agreement between countries or customs unions. Often goods must either be manufactured from raw materials or components that have been grown or produced in the beneficiary country or, should that not be the case, undergo a certain amount of working or processing in the beneficiary country. A bill of materials or BOM is a list of the raw materials, sub-assemblies, intermediate assemblies, subcomponents, parts, and the quantities needed to manufacture a product. Our scenario is rather complex, so please pay attention. Here we go. Our journey will start by looking at a multi-level bill of material for a finished product. We will then procure the necessary raw materials needed for our production. Following our purchase order, we will request long-term vendor declarations from the supplier and show how we request and maintain them. We will then kick off production. In fact, we will do multiple production runs, first for the semi-finished components, then for the finished material. As we produce, we will determine the identity-based preference for each production batch. We will eventually sell some of the finished goods and see if eligibility for preferential origin is determined or not. During our journey, we will also see how we can explore relevant batch information. We will kick off by briefly looking at the hero of our story, F3010, the finished goods we eventually will produce. F3010 has a three-level bomb, consisting of three semi-finished components. Our bomb also contains one coproduct. A coproduct is a product that is produced in conjunction with other products. We will now procure the necessary raw materials needed for our production. We open the Create Purchase Order app, enter the supplier number. To avoid mistakes and to save some time, we load the purchase order lines from a template. We review, then save and make a note of the purchase order number. As we procure new materials, they will appear on a work list if no long-term vendor declaration already exists for the combination of supplier and material. We will look at the work list for the supplier we just used in our purchase order. We get a list of materials in need of a long-term vendor declaration. We select all and click on follow on functions. We enter the date interval for which we request the declarations, enter a printout location, and move on by looking at a PDF preview of the requests. We go back, then press request and save. The system produces a detailed log with details about the requested vendor declarations. We will, hopefully, receive responses to our requests. These responses could be valid certificates of origin or do not qualify letters. After reviewing the response documents, we must populate the system with the data contained within these documents so that the vendor declaration data can be used downstream in the preference processing and customer long-term vendor declaration process. For each of the requested materials, and for both free trade agreements, we will indicate, based on the vendor declaration, whether the material is eligible or not for preferential treatment. We will finalize this process step by saving and aggregating the long-term vendor declaration. If we go back to the purchased raw material, we will progress by receiving them. Goods receipt could take place using warehouse management functionality, however, for simplicity, we will do it using the goods movement app. For each order line, we will record the storage location and confirm. Since most of the raw materials will be batch managed internally, the system will assign internal batch numbers when we check the goods receipt before saving it. Based on our chosen determination strategy, 
The identity-based vendor declaration created during goods receipt will inherit the preference information maintained in the long-term declaration we maintained earlier. This becomes visible for us when using the identity-based vendor declaration maintenance app and pick one of the newly created batches. We can also utilize the batch information cockpit to see if the maintained identity-based vendor declaration preference data have been transferred into the ERP system batches successfully. And as we can see here, they have. The raw materials are available and we are ready to create and release a production order for one of the three semi-finished goods, H2030. This product will later be used to produce the last semi-finished good, the H2010. We enter the necessary details and can notice that the two components, R1060 and R1070, are not batch managed. However, the semi-finished product will be batch managed, and we assign a batch number, 2937, before releasing and saving the production order. Before production begins, it is possible to simulate the preference calculation. With the Simulate Preference Calculation app's help, the system displays the result of a preference calculation for the order in simulation mode. No data is stored on the GTS or ERP side. The IBPP calculation is done based on the material reservation list of the production order. This enables you to choose the appropriate batches needed for a given desired preference determination result. We will now move on with the production. With a goods movement app, we will do the necessary goods issue of the production order components. We confirm the quantities line by line before we check and post the goods issue of components. As the first production order is completed, we do the receipt of the goods of the first semi-finished product, the H2010. This is done in the same app, the goods movement app. In real life, the goods receipt could have been done with the receipt from production functionality and extended warehouse management. When a production batch is completed, the production order needs to be transferred to GTS for preference calculation. We will trigger this manually, using the transfer orders for preference calculation app. The log confirms that the order with the bomb structure has been successfully sent. We will now switch to GTS and perform the preference calculation for the given production batch and order. We use the display work list of process production order app to do this. We enter our production order number. We can have a look at the bill of material before we trigger the preference calculation. The result of the determination appears in the threshold value column under preference data. The system determined the threshold value or preference price of the semi-finished product based on the preference agreement and product data defined in the system. This threshold value is then later compared to the price defined in the sales order to determine preference eligibility. We are ready to create and release a second production order, this time for one of the other semi-finished goods, H2020. We enter the necessary details and can notice that the three components are needed. This semi-finished product will, like the first one, be batch managed. We assign a batch number, 2938, before releasing and saving the production order. We run a quick simulation of preferential origin and see that this production batch will be eligible for EEC or EU origin. The components need to be issued to the production line. As last time we use the goods movement app for this. This time, the components are also batch managed, and we need to indicate which batch we are staging to the production line. We search and find the batches we want. This is repeated for all batch managed components. As production of H2020 is completed, we perform the necessary goods receipt with the Goods Movement app. Like our first order, the second production order also needs to be transferred to GTS for preference calculation. We will even this time trigger this manually, using the transfer orders for preference calculation app. The log confirms that the order with the bomb structure has been successfully sent. We switch to GTS and perform the preference calculation for our second production batch and order. We use the display work list of process production order app to do this. We enter our production order number. We can have a look at the bill of material before we trigger the preference calculation. The result of the determination appears as expected in the threshold value column under preference data. The system determined the threshold value or preference price of the semi-finished product based on the preference agreement and product data defined in the system. 
We will now create and release our third production order for the last one of the three semi-finished goods, H2010. This product has, interestingly the two other semi-finished materials in the component list. The bomb also contains a co-product, C2010. We will delete it from the production order because this is the first production cycle, and there is no stock available for C2010. Batch number 2939 is assigned before we release and save the production order. To trigger the production, we will stage the components to the production line. We will do it using the Goods Movement app. Alternatively, staging to production functionality and extended warehouse management could have been used. Three of the components are batch managed. We record the batch information for each of the staged components. We should be able to recognize the two semi-finished products with batch number 2938 and 2937, respectively. Like the semi-finished materials before, H2010 also needs to be received from production. Let's give it a go. We are starting to know the drill and quickly transfer the third production order to GTS for preference determination. In real life, this will be automated. We let GTS perform the preference calculation for our third production batch in order. Once again, we use the display work list of process production order app to do this. We enter our production order number. The bomb contains two components, with an existing calculated threshold value for eligibility. We can see the threshold value for our H2010 in the column under preference data. The system determined the threshold value or preference price of the semi-finished product based on the preference agreement and the product data defined in the system. It is finally time to create the production order for our finished goods, the F3010. We will use the semi-finished product H2010 and also produce a co-product in the same order. C2010. Our production batch gets batch number 2940 assigned. As with the other production orders, components need to be staged and issued. We indicate storage location and batch numbers. A new batch number is automatically assigned to the co-product. Production is completed, and we use, like before, the goods movement app to receive the finished product. We transfer the production order and batch to ERP for preference determination. In GTS, we run the preference determination. We take a quick look and see that a threshold value, considering the product and underlying batches, has been calculated. Using the display where used list of batches app, we can explore the full structure of consumed batches into our finished product batch, batch 2940. We are ready to sell. We therefore create a sales order for a quantity of 10 units of F3010 to our customer in Basel, Switzerland. We register the batch number and storage location for the product we will use to fulfill the sales order during subsequent delivery creation. This information is crucial since we would like to achieve eligibility for preferential origin. After creating the delivery, we use the Create Billing Document app to create a billing document. The system has compared the X works price of the product with the threshold value from the determination. If the preference field is set, the product is eligible for preferential treatment. If the field is not set, the product is not eligible. In this case, the product with batch 2940 is eligible for preferential treatment. Mission accomplished. The functionality shown in this video is available in SAP Global Trade Services with the SAP GTS Identity Based Preference Processing Add-on. The solution works connected to an SAP ERP, such as S4 HANA or SAP ECC. Let us recap some of the benefits provided by identity-based preference processing. Since you know the preference status per batch, you can deliver exactly the batches to your customers that they demand. In intercompany sales, this leads to reduced import duties to be paid by the company. In external sales, this leads to higher margins respectively lower prices for the end customer. Thanks a lot for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe. More videos like this coming shortly. See you then.